Welcome to Unit 4. I assume now you have installed Python and Jupyter Notebooks successfully. So, what to do with Jupyter Notebooks? What you have to do first is to open a shell, either a command shell or PowerShell on a Windows system or a terminal in a Mac or a Linux system. But don't be afraid, I will show a live demo at the end of this video. Once this shell or terminal is open, just type in Jupyter Notebook and hit the Enter key. This will start the Jupyter server, which will run in the background from now on. And this Jupyter server will open a browser or will open a new tab in an already running browser and uh, show something like this uh, screenshot on the right side. Actually, it's the content of the window where you have started your Jupyter server. You can navigate, you can go to other folders and directories and yeah, that's what you have to do next. Depending on your installation of Python, it could be that you have to slightly start the Jupyter server in a different way, but if you have followed up the way we recommend, that's the way how to do it. At this point in time, you should think about where to store your course material. There will be quite some data and files and, and directories, so we recommend you to somewhere create a folder, name it Python core, something like that. Maybe you have subfolders like week zero, week one, and so on and so on. And in there you download all the material we provide you. So now you should go and uh, download this uh, file week underscore zero underscore unit underscore four hello world dot ipynb. And this IPYNB stands for Python Notebook. Store it in the folder you have just created. Now go back to the Jupyter tab in your browser and navigate to the folder what you have just created. And there you could open this uh, notebook and it should look like, as you can see on the right side of this page. But here I have to make a comment first. It's very important for you to understand that there is thousands of different combinations of computers outside. Depending on different hardware, um, operating systems, stored software and so on and so on. So there's really um, too many configurations so that we could support all of you. So what we do, we assume simply that your Python installation and your Jupyter installation is running fine by starting with week one. And we assume, assume everything is working properly then. <clears throat> Most of our units will be organized as follow. To motivate what we are talking about, we will show some slides. But very quickly, we will then go into a Jupyter Notebook and do a live demo. And always at this point in time, this slide is shown. Showtime. There are some links in there. So for example, this download the notebook is pointing to unit 3, where you can once again see how to download both Python and Jupyter Notebooks or start the Jupyter server and open the notebook is pointing to exactly this unit. So now we are looking for Jupyter notebooks. So what are these notebooks? Notebooks are a perfect means to learn programming. Why? They have both documentation and the possibility to do implementation of code in one application. Let's really squeeze it all together in one place and that's very good. These notebooks consist of cells. There's two types of cells we are using. First, markup cells. There's, these are used for documentation. And there is coding cells. These cells are used for coding. Both cells have two different modes. 
there is first the edit mode. In this edit mode, you can simply change the documentation or change the implementation of the code. And there is a command mode. The command mode, the, the uh, markup cells simply look fine as they should look like. And in the command mode, if you run the command mode in the Python cell, in this coding cell, then the code is executed. Let's have a look at it. Let's go into a notebook. And now for the first time, it's showtime. Open your notebook, the one you have just downloaded, and let's see what we can do there. On a Windows system, there is different ways to open the command shell. What I'm doing is always type in the upper left cell, yeah, type CMD like command. You see this uh, shell is going up and then you have the shell. Yours is probably a little smaller. I have maximized mine and uh, used a bigger font. In here, you see I'm in the uh, folder users Jacobs. And in here, I simply type Jupyter Notebook. And if I hit now the return key, you see something is happening. The Jupyter, start, Jupyter server is starting in the background. And now I'll end up in a browser. And what you can see here is, again, these are the files and directories in this server where I've just started this Jupyter server. Now I'm going, I have organized my files as follow. Here is this folder documents and here I have my Python course. You see I've prepared already things for week zero and week one. I go to week zero and here's actually the notebook I have asked you to download. And if I open it, it takes a little while. The Jupyter server now interprets the uh, content of the notebook and what you see is actually this is our Jupyter notebook. You can see some, oops, you can see some um, commands in the, in, in the top. These are not really um, interest for us. What we can see here is these cells. Yeah, the first one with the blue um, line at the left side is the first cell. If I click in here, that's the second cell and so on and so on. These are both markup cells, whereas this is a coding cell. I can set it back now by simply saying, OK, restart and clear all output. So we go back to square zero. It took a little while, but you see now there is no output anymore. At the moment for you, it is important to understand these two different kind of modes. So first, yeah, if I double click on this cell, then it goes into edit mode. And you see now the whole thing looks a little bit different. It's not that nice to read, but it's good to yeah, write, to edit the text. I can add some in here, something like um, nonsense. And if I now would like to go back into command mode, I have to print shift return or I should press control return. Both work fine. And you see nonsense has been entered. Okay, better we put it away again. Yeah, so I delete it in edit mode and again control enter and I'm back in command mode. What you can see here Content-wise, Jupyter notebooks are all based on cells. This one again, once again, is a markdown cell, and this is a coding cell. And I can run this coding cell simply again by uh, typing shift return. And what you can see here is something is not running fine because I have entered by accident some code. I can rerun this coding cell. And what you see, um, the hello world is printed out just below of it. So what you right now have to understand, we have cells, yeah, there's coding cells, there's markdown cells, and we have, can toggle between command mode and execution mode. We go into um, edit mode typically by typing into a cell, yeah, double click, yeah, and we go back by 
um, clicking on uh, shift return or control return, actually you don't have to enter any markup cells. Uh, we have we have created them, um, but you if you want you can can give it a try. It's uh, fine. However, if you by accident end up in this edit mode, you should always know how to come back. And when it comes to the coding cells, yeah, then you simply can click in here. Now you're in edit mode. You can enter some more text, yeah, uh, some more code. Hello world, or hello again. Run it, and you see the um, program is executed. The output of the program is written down there. Active cells are the ones which are currently clicked on. You can see this one uh, is, is the one with the blue line at the left side. Now there is a menu bar on top. Maybe one thing is uh, what we what you should know is there is a kernel that's a Jupyter server in the back. And sometimes you run in a problem, then you would like to restart and clear output. Yeah, that's what I'm re doing now. Restart and clear all output. And what you can see, I'm now waiting that this happens, that the output is removed and the execution time in here is set back. There's no more execution in here. Basically, that's all for the time being. Give it a try. Try working with the notebooks and you'll be fine.